In Jules Verne's classic science fiction novel Journey to the Center of the Earth, the tale's central figure, an eccentric German scientist believes there are volcanic tubes that reach to the very center of the Earth. He then rappels into Iceland's celebrated inactive volcano, then contends with many dangers and finds a hidden biosystem full of cave-ins, subpolar tornadoes, an underground ocean, and living prehistoric creatures from the Mesozoic and Cainozoic eras. That was Iceland. Today, we are going to talk about something similar going on deep within Greenland. A stunning discovery, revisited by scientists, now reveals a strange world of colossal canyons and prehistoric plant life beneath the Greenland ice sheet. Orbit Beyond the Blue About 400,000 years ago, large parts of Greenland were ice-free. Scrubby tundra basked in the sun's rays on the island's northwest islands. Evidence suggests that a forest of spruce trees, buzzing with insects, covered the southern part of Greenland. Global sea level was much higher then, between 20 and 40 feet above two days levels. Around the world, land that now is home to hundreds of millions of people was underwater. In July 1966, American scientists and U.S. Army engineers completed a six-year effort to drill through the Greenland ice sheet. The drilling took place at Camp Century, one of the military's most unusual bases. It was nuclear-powered and made up of a series of tunnels dug into the Greenland ice sheet. The drill site in northwest Greenland was 138 miles from the coast and underlain by 4,560 feet of ice. Once they reached the bottom of the ice, the team kept drilling 12 more feet into the frozen, rocky soil below. In 1969, geophysicist Willy Danskod's analysis of the ice core from Camp Century revealed for the first time the details of how Earth's climate had changed dramatically over the last 125,000 years. Extended cold glacial periods when the ice expanded quickly gave way to warm interglacial periods when the ice melted and sea level rose, flooding coastal areas around the world. For nearly 30 years, Scientists paid little attention to the 12 feet of frozen soil from Camp Century. One study analyzed the pebbles to understand the bedrock beneath the ice sheet. Another suggested, intriguingly, that the frozen soil preserved evidence of a time warmer than today. But with no way to date the material, few people paid attention to these studies. By the 1990s, the frozen soil core had vanished, in the uppermost sample, scientists found perfectly preserved fossil plants, a proof positive that the land far below Camp Century had been ice-free sometime in the past. But when? Using samples cut from the center of the sediment core, and prepared and analyzed in the dark, so that the material retained an accurate memory of its last exposure to sunlight, we now know that the ice sheet covering northwest Greenland which nearly a mile thick today, vanished during the extended natural warm period known to climate scientists as Miss 11, between 424,000 and 374,000 years ago. That was a pretty miraculous engineering feat that has been really hard to repeat, said Andrew Christ, a geoscientist who recently completed a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Vermont. The sample was the first deep ice core that scientists had ever collected. And over the decades that followed, the ice became the subject of intense scientific study, providing critical clues about the planet's climate history. The same could not be said for the sediment, which was largely overlooked before vanishing completely. Multiple studies have shown that the ice sheets nearly vanished at least once in the past million years. But knowing exactly when parts of Greenland were last uncovered is crucial to understanding the fate of the ice sheet today. For the past 2.4 million years, the climate has shifted back and forth between frigid ice ages and warmer phases known as interglacials. Unlike today's warming, which is caused by the rapid release of planet warming pollution from burning fossil fuels, 
those ancient fluctuations in the planet's temperature were triggered by slight changes in the Earth's orbit. Depending on the way the planet wobbled as it circled the Sun, an interglacial might be hot and brief, or longer and milder. In 2017, the sediment was rediscovered in a freezer in Denmark. Paul Biermann, a geoscientist at the University of Vermont and an author of the new study, and an international team of collaborators first began studying the sediment several years ago, and they quickly made a surprising discovery. The top layer of the sample, where they had expected to find little more than a jumble of compressed rock, was full of plant matter, twigs, leaves, tiny pieces of moss. The discovery, which the scientists published in 2021, suggested that the area had not always been covered in ice. Over the next century, there's a decent chance we'll be seeing a lot more of the world beneath Greenland. And that's not a good thing. As a result of warming temperatures linked to climate change, Greenland was 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than the 20th century average in the decade from 2001 to 2011, and the hottest the region's been for over 1,000 years. This is catastrophic for its ice sheets and is set to raise sea levels by a significant amount within the next few decades, causing destruction and redistribution around the planet. Samples from parts of the ice sheet that are known to be less stable may be more informative about what could happen as the planet warms. Over the next century, there's a decent chance we'll be seeing a lot more of the world beneath Greenland, and that's not a good thing. This is catastrophic for its ice sheets and is set to raise sea levels by a significant amount within the next few decades, causing destruction and redistribution around the planet. But what do I know? Beyond the Blue